So your doctor just told you your PSA blood test is elevated. You're worried about prostate cancer. What now? Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Tucker, a medical oncologist at Tucker Medical in Singapore. And today, I'm going to speak with you about something that I'm passionate about. How to help men who have an elevated PSA blood test. PSA blood test is the so-called screening test for prostate cancer. And it's been a valuable blood test, but there are some ups and downs that we need to talk about and consequences to the PSA blood test that I can walk you through. So typically the PSA blood test, it always said zero to four is the normal range. But a lot of men have a PSA that might be five or six or seven. There are actually a lot of reasons why a PSA blood test could be outside the normal range. The most common reason, infection prostatitis, enlarged prostates, infections of prostate bladder, kidneys, even at times infections somewhere else in the body can temporarily increase the PSA outside the normal range. And that makes it not always the best test as a screening tool for prostate cancer. The second thing is chronic inflammation, old scarring, old infections that have gone away may still cause the PSA blood test to be abnormally elevated. An even more common reason that the PSA blood test could be elevated is age-related change in the prostate. That's called benign prostate growth or benign prostatic hypertrophy amongst doctors, but we'll call it BPH. BPH is a bigger prostate. A bigger prostate, more PSA. So those are common reasons that are not prostate cancer that your PSA blood test could be abnormal. Of course, early prostate cancer or even advanced prostate cancer could make the PSA blood test go up and we're gonna come to that. But it's my job right now, my interest, to make sure that men with harmless causes of increase in PSA don't get overdiagnosed or overtreated with prostate cancer. Here's the second thing to know about the PSA blood test and when it's elevated. Even if you're thinking it might be a sign or a worry for prostate cancer, we need to put prostate cancer in context with other medical problems. I'm often sent patients by family doctors, GPs, or cardiologists who have a high PSA, but they're sending the patient to me and not for prostate biopsy because we have to put the PSA and cancer risk in context of risk of heart attack, stroke, diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, dementia, fatty liver, arthritis, and all of the chronic illnesses that people are typically dying from or at least suffering from. So prostate cancer, when it's treated with surgery or radiation, has permanent side effects. Now, they may be minimized, but surgery and radiation are gonna impact erections, uh, urinary function, men might need to buy diapers, but they might be cured too. So I don't wanna be dismissive of the treatment, but the treatments do come with permanent side effects. Now, if you're a 75 year old man with a PSA elevation, but you have heart disease, you've had bypass and diabetes, I think that your risk of cardiovascular illness probably outweighs the risk from prostate cancer. By the way, prostate cancer survival untreated for at least the first five years is 100%. A lot of people don't know that because cancer is a word that makes us all think illogically, as we should. Cancer is the most inflammatory word in any language. So of course, logical thinking goes out the window but then come talk to me because we have to put this in context. That's the key. Now let me give you a third piece of information that's absolutely critical to understanding PSA testing. And that's testing your male hormone levels. You can't properly interpret a PSA in the absence of a testosterone level. So men got Nobel prizes 70 years ago for removing testosterone from patients with advanced metastatic prostate cancer. So it might seem logical that testosterone's bad, but that's not accurate. This is an example of saying testosterone 
might be a fuel for the cancer, but it's not the cause. That's like blaming gasoline for the fire when you should be blaming the match. Now, testosterone is key because if you have a lot of testosterone and prostate or PSA is going up, well, we can always reduce the testosterone and reduce the cancer. What's more worrisome to me is when the testosterone is low and the PSA is in the middle or going up because we worry about hormone resistant prostate cancer. We worry about a prostate cancer or a PSA that's going up despite low levels of testosterone. And so you have to know the testosterone to know is this PSA growing in an environment that has lots of food like testosterone? Or is this something that's growing in an environment that's very aggressive and doesn't have a lot of testosterone? Let me put a, a finer point on that. Patients with heart disease and diabetes have less blood flow to their heart, to their kidneys, and to their testicles, which means their testosterone may be low. And therefore, those men actually if and when they get diagnosed with prostate cancer, are more likely to have aggressive versions of prostate cancer. So it's really important to put PSA at any level in context with testosterone. And I guess before we run out of time, I'd throw in that in the modern world, we also have the MRI machine. And increasingly, an MRI of the prostate is an incredibly useful tool for defining the shape, the structure, and the presence of early prostate cancers in the prostate. It's much better than the old finger exam in the tushy. It's much better than just relying on a PSA alone. If you have a family history of prostate cancer, an abnormal PSA, and have access to an MRI, we can really do a good job helping define your personal risk of prostate cancer, do personalized screening, and come up with a personalized treatment plan, not just for cancer risk and treatment, but for comprehensive health, reducing risk of heart disease, diabetes, obesity, because all of those cardiometabolic diseases are tightly associated with the risk of prostate cancer and vice versa. In our next video, we're gonna talk about I've been diagnosed with prostate cancer, what now? Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the box below. I'm Steve Tucker, signing off.